the Sun Temple of Konark. Konark is a town in the state of Odisha on the east coast of India, around 40 miles away from the ocean, the Bay of Bengal. The Sun Temple is located at this site. The temple is dedicated to Surya, the Sun God. The temple was built in the first half of the 13th century by King Langula Narsingh Dev of the Ganga dynasty. What remains of this 800-year-old monument is only the Jagmohana, which is the assembly hall, while the main temple and most of the Natya Mandap, which is the dance hall, are destroyed. The temple lay buried about 400 years, utterly destroyed. It was an enormous task to restore the pieces of this temple from the ruins. The Sun Temple of Konark is listed as one of the World Heritage Sites by UNESCO in 1984. Even in its ruined state, it reflects the magnificence and sophistication of sculptural work. Konark was once a prosperous harbor for the merchants of Kalinga, the present-day Odisha. The Konark Temple is an amazing technology that combined astronomy, mathematical precision, and engineering. It is mentioned in one of the chronicles of the Jagannath Temple of Puri that the first effort in discovering this precious architectural monument that lay buried and hidden behind an overgrowth of jungle was made by Baba Brahmachari sometime around 1750 AD. The temple is shaped like a giant chariot which symbolizes the concept of time. The chariot is drawn by seven horses. Most of them are ruined now. These represent seven days in a week. Another theory is that these seven horses represent seven colors of sun's rays. The positioning of the temple is in the east direction. It is said that 1200 craftsmen worked for 12 years to build this temple. The major attraction of Konark temple is its wheels, 24 in all, 12 on each side of the temple structure. They are exquisitely carved and each wheel is uniquely designed. These 12 wheels represent the 12 months in a year. They form the base and serve the purpose of sundial as well. They help in calculating the exact time of the day by looking at the angle of the shadows cast by the wheel's spokes. Each wheel has eight wide spokes and eight thin spokes. These thin spokes look like a string of beads. The distance between two wide spokes is of three hours, whereas the thin spoke between the two wide spokes is of one and a half one and a half hours. Every single piece of Konark temple is intricately carved. These carvings include deities, dancers, scenes from the daily routines and practices, carvings of birds, animals, as well as mythological figures. The carvings depict a variety of information about their social life. A little bit information about the temple complex. The Jagmohana and the main temple, which was also known as the Vimana, stand on the same platform. The Vimana no longer exists. The architecture is so unique that the first rays of the sun from the coastline would fall on the Natya Mandap. The rays then would reflect from the diamond placed at the top of the sun god idol in the main temple. The main entrance leads to the Natya Mandap. This is a big pillared hall built on a raised platform in front of the Jagmohana. The delicately carved dancing figures on the pillars represent the traditional Odissi dance form. At the entrance of the Natya Mandap are two carved statues of magnificent stone lions crushing elephants. It is estimated 
that the main temple must have been around 230 feet tall. It collapsed sometime in 1837. The Jagmohana which is about 130 feet tall, still exists and is the primary surviving structure of the ruins. The cause of destruction of Konar temple is not very clear. Several theories exist which mention that the cause could be from natural forces because the temple was close to the ocean or could be from an intentional destruction between 15th and 17th centuries. It is also said that when this place was built, a massive 50-ton magnet was placed at the top of the main temple, which kept the sun idol inside the temple up in the air. Legends say that the magnetic effect was so strong that it caused disturbance in the ship's compasses as they passed by Konard's coast thus making navigation very difficult for the sailors. And to save their trade and their ships, the Portuguese sailors tore down the magnet which eventually led to the collapse of the temple. However, there is no historical record of such powerful magnet and up until now, no one knows where the magnet is. The first effort made to conserve the Sun Temple was in 1803 by the East India Marine Board. The temple, called as the Black Pagoda by European mariners, served as a navigational landmark. Some periodic attempts were made to gather and preserve the remains of the destroyed monument. It was in 1901 that the repair and restoration of the temple was ordered by the government. It was like putting together a massive jigsaw puzzle without any proper authentic reference to go by. Of course, additional information was collected from the manuscripts, manuscripts and ancient writings discovered from the temple of Jagannath Puri, the Ainai Akbari by Abul Fazl in the 16th century AD and other related authentic sources. While the restoration was in process, Sometimes mistakes did happen. Pieces of carvings were placed in the wrong direction. However, they were fixed in due course. It was during this phase of restoration that the giant wheels were excavated. Soon it became clear that the temple sat in the middle of a wide complex surrounded by smaller temples, a well, a kitchen and so on. The Maya Devi temple was unearthed in 1909. As the temple was being restored, it was found that there were other structures underneath the sand. This vast 13th century temple complex originally was enclosed within a wall measuring around 900 feet by 550 feet with gateways on three sides. Konarksan temple is one of the finest architectural wonders of the 13th century that combines many facets of arts, science, engineering, mathematics, astronomy, and spirituality. <laughs>